Hello knitters and fiber friends. It's summertime and the living is easy. I'm Mary Annarella and this is the Lyrical Knitting Podcast. Hey everybody, like I said, it's summertime in the Northeast and it is hot and usually humid. And the first thing you may notice is that I am not up in my studio. And that's because my studio, my yarn studio, is on the third floor of my house and it is hotter than Hades up there. I mean, it is an oven in my studio and I set up to start the podcast up there and in about five minutes there was just sweat pouring down from my forehead. <laughs> So I thought, you all didn't need to see that, and so I thought, well, you know what, I'll turn on the fan. And the fan made so much noise that it, it just wasn't worth it. So I waited for things to cool off a little bit, and I came outside and found a little bit of shade in my backyard. That's actually my garage behind the house. I have a brick house and a brick garage that matches it. So we're just hanging out here in the garden, and um, I've actually been doing a little gardening. Um, you can see that plant down there. There, there's a potted plant there, obviously, and there was a hosta there that was not doing so well. And I've been meaning to dig it up for years, and finally digged it up, dug it up, digged it up. Oh, <laughs> my mother's an English teacher; she would be appalled. I finally dug up that old plant, and I moved it way over that away. Um, but there was a hole there, and so I thought, you know what? I'm going to put one of my potted plants, one of my annuals, it's a verbena, and just kind of put it in that spot because this is kind of a hangout spot for me in my backyard because it gets afternoon shade, which is pretty much essential for hanging out outside in the Northeast in, um, in July. So it's hot. <laughs> it's probably hot where a lot of you are too, especially if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, so there is not a whole lot of knitting going on. I am really in lazy mode right now. Um, a lot of you know that I teach at a college during, during the fall and spring semester, but I actually take a break from teaching in the summer to just focus on my design work. Um, I'm designing year-round, but in the summertime I get to do that full-time, and so that's, that's really nice. Um, but I get into lazy mode when it comes to a lot of things, like cooking. Kind of lazy. I'm just thinking, eh, do we need dinner? Let's just go out for ice cream. <laughs> Don't tell the kids, but we're having dessert for dinner. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm hosting a sweater along. <laughs> And this way, in my Lyrical Knits Ravelry group, and, and on Instagram as well, a lot of you are posting there about the, about the sweaters that you're knitting, and I have experienced utter and complete sweater fail. I started a sweater <laughs> after I published Amy Farrah Fowler, which was that brown, brown, purplish cardigan that I, I um, talked about in the last episode of the podcast. I thought, you know what? I have done a cardigan for Amy Farrah Fowler. Now I'm gonna look at all the cardigans that the character of Bernadette in the Big Bang Theory wore, you know, in the same show. Like for the first like six seasons, she wore these little cropped cardigans um, that were, that, that had an open neckline and they were, you know, a little snug around her bust line. I'll have the bust line that Bernadette has. Um, but they were like mm, not elbow length, but a little higher than that, but not super short sleeves. And Bernadette always wore these with these big, um, lovely, um, like not A line, I'm trying to think, um, flared, fit and flare skirts. Um, that's the word I'm looking for. She would wear them with the, uh, a snug cropped cardigan with fit and flare skirts. So I thought I'll design one of those next and I'll, I'll embellish it with like a really cool little maybe mini cable pattern or something. And so I cast that on along with a lot of you in the sweater along and I just kind of drifted. My gauge was off 
that I didn't notice until way into the pattern. And then I decided that something, that a decision I had made for the neckline, I'm like, ah, I'm really not feeling this. It's just not working. And I set it aside and I haven't picked it up since. Don't tell anyone. I failed my own knit along. <laughs> but meanwhile, I, gosh, I, what have I done since the last um, podcast? I finished up a semester of teaching. I um, went out to Boise, Idaho to visit my son and his fiance. And while I was there, I worked on a shawl that I'm gonna show you a little later. I actually finished it right after I got back home. Um, but I worked on a shawl while I was there, had a great time. Um, came back home, I actually had a little vacation on the Connecticut coast for about three or four days over the 4th of July and had like some of the best, saw some of the best firework shows I've ever seen in my life, which at my age might be saying something, maybe not. But um, people were out on the beach lighting these incredible firework shows. Like, like I was thinking people must have spent like tens of thousands of dollars on, on their personal fireworks to shoot off there. And it was incredible. It was so beautiful. We had a beautiful sunset on the beach on the 4th of July, walked around, and then we sat on a pier and we just watched this incredible firework show. So it was a real delight. Yeah. So I did that for a few days and then we went to New York City for a couple of days where I saw two shows. We saw Beetlejuice. Say it three times. I did. Um, which was a hilarious show. Not suitable for children. Definitely not. They, they swore like crazy and it was like, I, I called it a two and a half hour high. I have never laughed that hard for that continuous amount of time, like ever. Um, hilarious show, really, really well done. If you get a chance to see it in New York City or on tour, go and see it. It was awesome. But even better than that was the next day we saw Come From Away, which was absolutely a beautiful show about uh, people who were flying on September 11th, 2001, and you all, you all know the story of September 11th. Um, but many planes were forced to land in a small town called Gander in Newfoundland. Newfoundland is a um, part of Canada and it's, it's a North Atlantic province. And so a lot of planes were stranded there. 16,000 people were involved in, in who were either stranded there or were um, natives of Newfoundland helping helping to assist um, housing all of these people and getting to know all of the people from all over the world who were basically grounded there during that time. And it was an absolutely amazing show and so inspiring. Um, so inspiring that I got inspired to come home and knit again. <laughs> so. So I've actually started a new project, which is just barely getting going. I actually have, oh, they're over here on the table. I actually have some yarn cakes here. These are actually mini skeins from a crown wools kit from Miss Babs. Um, Miss Babs makes 12 skein kits for several different different patterns, but this one is actually from the Crown Wools collection. Crown, the Crown Wools is a shawl pattern that started off as a mystery knit along that was actually designed by um, Casapinka on Ravelry. Um, she goes by Casapinka on Ravelry and Instagram, and um, it's a play on the term the Crown Jewels. So the Crown Jewels of England, this is, these are the Crown Wools. But a lot of other designers are also using these kits for some other um, patterns. And I decided to do the same thing because I had a really, have a really great shawl idea that is just coming into fruition and I'm getting ready to write it up right now. 
and it too will be a mystery knit along. So stay tuned to stay tuned because it will be going up for pre-order in September sometime, but that's a big shh, secret, secret project. But um, anyhow, I've actually um, been working on, um, been, been helping along a test knit for a new shawl pattern that's coming out, which plays with um, miters um, in garter stitch. And if you're at all familiar with garter stitch uh, triangle shawls, you know that you can get a shape like this. Yes, I actually did a little arts and crafts project for you. I was cutting out, cutting out triangles here. Uh, this is actually an isosceles triangle where um, these two sides are the same length and this one down here is wider. And it's really like two right triangles. If I put a line from here to here, we'd have two right triangles with a right angle here and a right angle there. But anyhow, if you want to do a triangle shawl, you can start, let me, let me pull up this one where I colored in for you. You can start from here, from just what's called a garter tab cast on, right there, and then work your way out, making the shawl bigger and bigger. And here I put some color stripes up here for you, like that. So you'll be increasing at this edge and increasing along this central spine or center stitch and increasing over here and you'll pretty much if you're working a garter stitch you will end up with a triangle that looks a lot like this. Well about I want to say it was five years ago I was like huh I don't really I love knitting triangle shawls but I don't always like wearing them. I don't know it's, it's just me I just can't seem to figure out like how to drape the triangle around me or do I just put it around my neck and leave it that way but I thought huh it would be fun to play around with triangles and get a different shape so I was playing with this little game it, it, it or a puzzle I don't know really to whether to call it a game or a puzzle but it's called tangrams and um, for example, if you're teaching, if you have a kid who is in a geometry class, um, or, or even just a basic like middle school math class, they're doing a lot of geometry, and they may be playing with tangrams. Tangrams are some shapes that are cut out, and you make like little pictures out of squares, triangles, and the like. Well, one day I was playing with triangles, and this was again five years ago, and I was realized, huh, I could make a couple of different triangle shawls like this. And again, because you start here and you work out, these are all going to be live stitches right there. I thought, huh, well this is really interesting. You know, I was playing with the tangrams and I was like, oh look, two triangles. I was like, huh, but look at this. There's a triangle space in here too. What if I did a shawl where I knit two triangles from the inside working out and then I pick up these stitches here and work a triangle from the outside working in getting smaller like this. I'd end up with basically, is that a trapezoid? That's a trapezoid. I'd end up with basically a trapezoid and you know an almost rectangular shawl. So I did that but I didn't like do a different striping pattern on each of the three sections. I kept them the same so that you couldn't tell where you started and where you finished the shawl. And that shawl was called passaggio. Um, the word passaggio is an Italian word and it means um, the transition, like the transition time from from afternoon to evening, so like early evening. And I don't know, I had just gone to, to Italy for my for a significant birthday and I thought, I want to, I love all things Italian. I'm going to name this shawl an Italian name, even though no one can spell it. <laughs> so, but it's a really great shawl and it's a really great pattern and I did it in sock yarn like this. And what I did was use just one solid gray color like this 
and I used a, bits of a leftover gradient from another project. Let me, let me show you what this whole shawl looks like. Here we go. Oops, what if I, oh, I gotta turn this upside down for you all. Oh, you can see my shorts, my baggy shorts. But like right here, here's one triangle here. Can you see it coming this way? And there's an upside down triangle in between these two downside up triangles. Yeah. And I did it in my favorite color, purple, all right? Um, and so what you get is just a trapezoid shawl that pretty much works like a rectangular shawl. Um, I wear it a lot just at, in the winter time, just kind of like this. It's a really great scarf and it's a long one so I tuck it under here and oh my gosh it is great under a coat especially like a coat that has an open collar then I get to keep all this stuff warm right here so it's really nice but I'm gonna die if I wear it on a day like this it's still like 81 degrees in the shade here so maybe I'll take this off for now and I'll set it on the back of my chair so I've done a few shawls like this in the past. Uh, the Rickroll wrap is really similar to that too. It's only two triangles and that allows you to strategically pace, place buttons and wrap it around yourself in some funky ways that are, that are really asymmetrical and fun and, and, and cool. Um, so, so a while back I was thinking, hmm, I really want to play with miters some more, but I don't want to just do the same shape. I want to play around some more. I'm like, what else can I do with triangles? And I was like, well, hmm. I was um, getting out of the shower one day and I was looking at the tiles on my floor and I was like, huh, these tile squares form a really interesting pattern. It looks really cool, but what if I didn't do them you know, putting together just some squares for a shawl. What if I tilted them on their side? And then I was like, bingo, that's it. Um, and I had um, met and run into Amy, or M.A., of La Bien M.A. at um, Vogue Knitting Live back in January. And I had actually sent them a sample of my Throwback Thursday sweater that was knit in their yarn when they had a bunch of their samples just tragically stolen from them. It was horrible. So I thought, you know what? I actually have two of these sweater. I had the Throwback Thursday and Worsted already. I sent them the fingering version because it was in their fabulous yarn. And they mentioned to me, please let us know anytime you would like to collaborate on a project, we'd be happy to provide yarn support for you. And as soon as I came up with this idea of knitting squares, I thought, that's it. I, I know the exact yarn I want to use for this and I know one of the colors. I want to use this incredible yellow color that La Bien Aime dyes called Yellow Brick Road. Because it makes me want to click my heels and say there's no place like home. There's no yellow like Yellow Brick Road. So I came up, oh, here, let me give you a peek of the yellow. Here's the yellow. Yeah, it's a little muted. It's not a soup. It's not a lemon yellow. It's not a golden yellow. It's not grello, really. It, I mean, it's a little green leaning, but it's, it's enough leaning towards mustard without being mustard that I, I just, it, it appeals to me so much. So you see the colors that I used. I used an off-white for the background, a very pale, 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 pale gray, a mid-tone gray, and then the yellow brick road. And what I came up with was like, huh, what if I made some squares? Let me hold this up for you. And instead of doing a triangle, I'll just increase along this central stitch and not increase along the sides here and you'll get a V color like that, a v, v color, a V shape like that. And then I'll decrease along there and get a square. I was like, you know what? So I played around. Do I have a third square here? And I thought, well, I'll make a couple squares. I'm like, well, two squares doesn't really make a shawl. Yeah. 
So I thought, well, but even so, I could, what if I made three squares? And ooh, look what's in between the two squares. I'm seeing some triangle shapes there. So I had three squares. And in between the two squares, I connect them, or I, rather, I have you in the pattern connect them to do this. Okay, now I'm not gonna tape all these together. What I'll do is show you that I thought, oh, you know what, these squares are cool, but what if I turn one of them upside down compared to each other like that? And we have some cool shapes. like this and I'll have everybody work triangles in the middle of them and you can stash bust or you can buy a kit for it it'll just be so much fun I love three color combinations they're less complicated than than doing a fade for example where you have to find like six colors and oh my god like does this fade right why not um I really like three color combinations where you have two contrasting colors that don't have to contrast with each other but they just contrast with a main color so it's easy to choose colors um, and for the pattern I even came up with a coloring template for you all so if that if you're not sure about the colors you can just print that out and have fun just mindlessly coloring into your heart's content um, I'm really thrilled with all of the color combinations that the test knitters came up with. Fabulous group of test knitters. Um, I'll put the link to the pattern in, in the description below and definitely check out all of the test knits because their choices are, their color choices are absolutely fun and beautiful. But um, what I got was a really cool shape to this shawl that I'll show you now. Let's see. And you see all the color? Oh my gosh, the square looks so big here. Let me back it up. There's a square in the center. Oops, actually, it's supposed to be like this. There we go. Ta da! Here's a square. There's a square in the middle where my chin is, and a square over here. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll hang this up for you. There are actually some nails along the side of my garage. I'll toss it this way. And we'll hang up this bad boy. Let me see. I'll pin this up here. earlier and I was pretty sure there was another yep there's a nail I thought there was one here I guess not this kind of kind of sort of shows you what it looks like you've got one square here square two here oh my gosh this is like a felt board from like kindergarten you guys do you all remember those felt boards where, where you know you're telling a story it's story time with kids and you put like a figure of of one character up on the felt board and it sticks. That's what this is like. So one square, two squares, three squares, and you knit those all separately. So knitting the squares is really super portable. So it's really nice for vacation knitting where you don't have this humongous shawl on your lap and you're like sweating. So you knit each of those one, two, three squares separately and then you gradually join them with a fill in the valley kind of triangle. And then you fill in the valley here and fill in a valley there, fill in a valley there and boom, you're done. So you don't ever have this whole huge shawl on your lap at one time and you never have a gazillion stitches on your needles at the same time. So it's a really easy, really satisfying knit. Um, the name of it, okay, I started off because you all know that I like, um, I like puns. I like lyrics, I like puns. And I couldn't think of a lyric for this other than something like square. It's hip to be square, 
Remember that from um, the Back to the Future movies? I was like, eh, not feeling that. And then I thought, how about, how about sayings like back to square one? Because you make square one, square two, square three, and then you gradually join them until you finally make it back to square one. But then I thought, oh, back to square one reminds me of playing the game Candyland as a kid when you get all the way to the end and you pick up some card that sends you all the way back to the beginning. I hated that. So that kind of bugged me. So I asked my fiance, David, I'm like, do you have any ideas for like square, like sayings or idioms in English with the word square in it? And we're like, E equals MC squared. Um, <laughs> like, no, that wasn't speaking to me there. And he said square root. I'm like, eh, taking the square root of something. I'm like, no, that doesn't do it. And then all of a sudden I was like, square root, but I'm going to spell it square R O U T E. And he just went, and I went, because I love puns, <laughs> okay? So square root is the name of the shawl, but there's no algebra involved at all. I've done all the math for you. <laughs> and it's the route you take, squares are the route you take to make the shawl. And so that just set off all these bells and whistles in my, my nerdy, nerdy little brain um, that obviously needs to get out more. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, I, I love a good pun, and um, that is the only knitting I have done. This is the only FO I have had all summer long so far. Because like I said, my sweater failed, <laughs> and I'm going to pick that up again soon, and I'm going to be, you know, doing a shawl here with these candy colored skeins. Right. So, but these aren't going to be ready for, for pre-order until like September and the knit along's not going to start until the end of October. So if you're looking for this pattern, I'll put the links in the description. Otherwise, I'm probably going to cast on a Bernadette sweater for the summer and just not put pressure on myself. I think vacation knitting should be pretty easy and um, and shouldn't be heavy and shouldn't be too hot either so this is about my speed for the summer and I hope wherever you are you are enjoying a little time off a bit of a break I hope you're enjoying lovely weather and if you are not in summer mode right now if you're living in the southern hemisphere then I hope you're enjoying some lovely winter weather as well and really getting out your sweaters and enjoying wearing your woolies too. Um, I will be back probably in another month because I've got another week-long vacation coming up pretty soon where I'm going to be going to the coast and we'll be wrapping up the sweater along and then Lyrical Knits group on Ravelry and I hope you are well, I hope you are rested, and I hope you have a great week. Take it easy and thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button and have a little knitting and spread a little sunshine wherever you go.